Okay, so in this video, we want to provide a heuristic proof of L'Hopital's rule in the 0 over 0 case. And so the, the rule states that if we have a limit as x approaches a real number of the ratio of two functions, giving a 0 over 0 case, so as x approaches a, both f and g are approaching 0, and the limit will be equal to the new limit, where x is still approaching a, but instead of the ratio of the original functions, it will be the ratio of the corresponding derivatives. And here we will make, for the sake of this simplified heuristic proof, two additional arguments, that the new limit no longer is of the form 0 over 0. So we assume that as x approaches a, f prime of x will approach f prime of a, and we assume this is non-zero. And as x approaches a, g prime of x will, appro will approach g prime of a, and we also assume here that this will not be zero. Very soon, we will be able to prove that we can do without these two assumptions, that this new limit may still be of the type zero over zero, but as long as this limit exists, then the original limit, if it is indeed a zero over zero case, will have to be equal to the new limit of the ratio of the respective derivatives. As we uh, talked about in the previous video, fundamentally here we want to use linear approximation. So let's sketch the graph of f of x, an arbitrary function, but where we do know that since as x approaches a, f of x approaches zero, well, this implies that f of a is equal to zero, and similarly, as x approaches a, g of x will approach g of a, which is also zero, so g of a is also zero. So when we sketch the graph of f of x around a, again, because x approaching a, we only care about the local behavior of f around a, we will sketch the graph of a function that is equal to zero at x equals a. Suppose the function looks like this, and a is some positive real number, that's not important. So this is the graph of f of x. And again, we want to approximate the function f of x by its tangent line at a, since we only care about the values of the function when x is getting closer and closer to a. So we localize around a by the tangent line. And if you recall, we've already shown that, in general, if you ask what is the equation of the tangent line to a function f at x equals a, the answer is simply f of a plus the derivative of the function at a times x minus a. And now we can make the statement of linear approximation, which is If x is very close to the point of tangency, then the values of the function are very close to the values along its tangent line, given by this expression. And what is key to emphasize is that the closer x is to a, the better this approximation. And you can see this geometrically very well, right? If you take x to be here, a little further away from a, the y value on the function is a little off of the tangent line. But if you move x closer to a, the y value on the function is much closer to the y value along its tangent line. And the closer x is to a, the closer both values are to each other. And now we have a simplifying uh, feature here. Since f of a is zero, we can toss this term. This is coming from the assumption of the zero over zero nature of the initial limit. So what we have is fundamentally, because f of a is zero, 
then the function is approximately simply the slope at a times x minus a. And we gave here a general argument for an arbitrary function f, and because g is also of the um, same type, whereas x approaches a, g approaches 0, g of a is also 0, so the exact same argument can be made if we replace f by g. So if x is very close to a, not only is f about its slope at a times x minus a, but the same is true of g. g will also be approximately its slope at a times x minus a. And now if we apply this linear approximation to the original ratio of f over g, what does that give us? Well, f of x over g of x will be approximately replacing each function by the equation of its tangent line, f prime of a over x minus a, over g prime of a times x minus a. The x minus a cancel, and we're left with the ratio of the respective derivatives at x equals a. And again, the key feature to emphasize here, the key property is that the closer x is to a, the better the approximation. As x approaches a, this will be getting closer and closer and closer to f prime of a over g prime of a. So if we now rewrite this using the limit notation, as x approaches a, as x is getting closer and closer to a, f of x over g of x will be getting closer and closer and closer to the ratio of the respective derivatives. And we can write this slightly more uh, generally, going back to the limit, as, and you can see why here we assume that g and f prime at a were non-zero. It's more important for g prime of a to not be zero. If it is zero, then this uh, number does not exist. We have a, an exact division by zero. This breaks down. But assuming for now that g prime of a is non-zero, then this is perfectly uh, a well-defined real number. And then we can rewrite this as a limit. right? If you write this as f prime over g prime of x, Well, as x approaches a, this should approach f prime of a, and this should approach g prime of a. And we can now rewrite that this limit will equal this limit. Again, critically important that the initial limit is of the type 0 over 0. You can see why. right? If f of a is non-zero, then the numerator here will not simplify to simply f prime of a times x minus a. There will be here a plus f of a plus g of a, and so this will not simplify to the ratio of the respective derivatives. This simplification only occurs if both functions f and g are equal to 0 at a. That is why the type of the case being 0 over 0 is of critical importance. If this is not true, then the argument of the simplification through linear approximation breaks down completely and these will not be equal. But if the case is 0 over 0, they should be. Again here we made two additional assumptions, but we really only needed the g prime of a not being 0. We could have tossed this one. As long as g prime of a is not 0, this is well defined, and these two limits should be the same. So if we rewrite this, the limit of the ratio of the initial functions, if the case is of the type 0 over 0, should be equal to the limit of the ratio of the respective derivatives. Very soon, we will show that, again as I've already said, we do not even need to make this assumption. G prime and f prime could both be approaching 0 as x approaches a, 
as long as this limit exists, even if it may be of the type 0 over 0 again, as long as this limit exists, the original limit will have to be equal to it. We had to make this additional assumption for now to simplify the argument, but again very soon we will prove that these limits are equal as long as the new limit exists. Now to prove this, uh, we will have to set up or take a detour to look at two fundamental results, namely the mean value theorem and Cauchy's mean value theorem. But you can see that intuitively at least, L'Hopital's rule in the 0 over 0 case fundamentally boils down to an application of linear approximation. So hopefully this makes the result very intuitive as a simple consequence of linear approximation. But again, to prove that we do not even need to make this additional assumption, that all we need is for this limit to exist. And if this limit does exist, then it is equal to the original limit. But again, to prove this, we will need the mean value uh, theorem and Cauchy's mean value theorem of differentiation. And we will cover those two intuitively in the next two videos.